I'm Cassandra Kabinsky. Um, very excited to be here with you all today. And um, all right, so that's my name, my background. Uh, I'm a songwriter and a singer full time. So uh, I write songs. I sing on a lot of different projects, not only my own songs, um, making records, releasing, um, you know, singles and albums uh, and music videos and like performing shows, stuff like that. But then also I get to be a vocalist for other projects. So like singing on commercials, um, sometimes just doing the talking, like the voiceover part of commercials. Um, so I do that. And um, I do some... Um, theater and some coaching artists as well. I work with a couple select artists kind of up leveling their music careers. So it's kind of a mix, but at the center of it all for me is always the song like songwriting and um, a great song that moves people is always kind of the center point of everything I do. And um, I got into this. Gosh, Let's see. So I started out as a child actress when I was 12. Um, I was doing professional theater. I was doing this show called Annie, which I'm sure some of you guys are familiar with. And um, I was playing the role of Annie. And uh, then through my teen years, I continued to do theater. So I was, uh, you know, on stage performing, doing eight shows a week in some cases at theaters. And it wasn't until I went to college, I went to Florida State, um, where I just fell in love with songwriting. And, I, you know, it was kind of a crazy inspiration because I don't have anyone in my family who's a professional musician. But I just, something struck me and I felt like, you know, I wanted to be the writer of songs and not just the interpreter of songs anymore. So that's really how I got started songwriting. Um, and then after college, I moved to New York City. And that's where, you know, I started to build my career and things started to take off. Well, uh, is it okay if we jump into some student questions and then maybe we'll have you perform something in a second? Yeah, totally. Totally. Okay. I'd love to, to hear from you guys, whatever you want to know. So, and again, guys, thank you so much. We're getting a lot of awesome questions. Feel free to uh, keep them coming. You can check her out on CassandraKavinsky.com. And she also has her social media uh, links on her website. Um, one of the kids wanted to know, how were you always interested in music? And um, were, was there a certain type of music that you sort of gravitated to when you were younger? Yeah, great question. So, I mean, definitely for me, music has always been a thing. Um, you know, my mom likes to tell the story of how I was singing by the time I was two. And honestly, like she let me do the professional theater stuff so that she could get me singing out of the house instead of just singing in the house constantly. Um, but the, some of the music that I liked when I was younger, like when I got started. Um, so like I said, a lot of musical theater, because that just happened to be like what I was doing when I was young. But also... Um, acts like um, Billy Joel, who's a big favorite of mine. And um, at that time, like my parents were listening to a lot of 70s singer songwriters like Jackson Brown and Carole King that I was into. Um, but I really started to get into pop music in high school. So um, I kind of like wasn't, I was definitely not a cool kid in any way whatsoever when I was younger. And um, so like my friends were all watching MTV and my family didn't even have cable. So I kind of missed like a lot of what was going on in the pop culture until high school. Um, and that's when I remember driving around in my, my Hyundai Elantra and hearing Britney Spears' Baby One More Time on the radio for the first time and just being like, what is that sound? You know, like, what are these like poppy, snappy, just bubblegum sounds? And, um, you know, I don't know. I, I, I was drawn to it. And, um, you know, now for me, I listen to a whole ton of different things. So, you know, I could be in any given day, I could be listening to, um, Billie Eilish and then, um, Brazilian jazz and then like yoga chant music. And to me, it's all just interesting. Unmuting. Um, yeah, so it's all just like different sounds and textures that I can use to, to catch a feeling, you know, to become inspired. And sometimes that flows into the songs that I write, um, even when it's like really unexpected. So yeah, I listen to a lot of different stuff. 
Great. Sorry about that technical difficulties, but no like worries. a true professional, you handled it. Um, Listen, so, as long as Zoom tells me what to do and it says unmute, good. I'm like, yes, I will do that. <laughs> I got you. We have a question from Blanca in Spain. And Blanca, you had a really awesome question. You should be able to unmute to go ahead and ask. Um, when you compose the songs, how do you have the idea of the lyrics? Okay. Um, great question. How do I have the idea for the lyrics? So for me, in the songwriting process, um, every song is different. So if you were to go and listen to some of my music on Spotify or Apple Music or Pandora or wherever you like to listen, um, you'd have to ask me about like each individual song. So there's not really one rule, but what I will say is that often for me, if there's an image or a metaphor or like something in, um, in words that inspires me, then the lyrics will come first. Um, but there are other times where, you know, I'm just noodling. You guys might not be able to see, but I got a keyboard here. And um, so like, there's this song called Cradle the Moon that just started like this. So it was like really, really simple, but I was just playing that and, and feeling it, you know, just kind of like vibing with what that was and something about that vibe suggested the lyrics, which the lyrics of Cradle of the Moon turned out to be um, all kind of oriented around being in sort of a, a hard place and, you know, not being sure, uh, you know, if I had the strength to keep going and like having somebody there who's there for you, who makes you feel like you can do it, um, who makes you feel like you can hold the sun and cradle the moon. So like in that case, the music kind of guided me to the lyrics. But in other cases, um, like there's a, a my new single, my new music video is for a song called Stardust. And those lyrics kind of came first where I was getting really obsessed with the idea that we're all just the remnants of exploded stars, you know, and it's not a new idea, but I just kind of latched onto it for myself. And, and the, the words started to flow before the music did for that. So yeah, it depends on the song. And would you be able to play uh, some of Stardust for, for us so we can kind of sure. see it in, in motion? Absolutely. Um, so yeah, there's, um, I was just showing, Ralph before, but there's a, a cool new music video that we just put out for this that um, fortunately went viral on YouTube. That was very unexpected. So if you guys want to check that out at any point, uh, you'll see me out in Colorado in the fields. So it goes like this. In the beginning, a billion years ago, a great explosion. From the dark unknown, send fire raining down to the ground below. Molten seeds that started to grow, and all their secrets were so mysterious. Imbued the water and the trees, and everything we can touch in that cosmic wonder. Is still inside of us, and I know we're invincible because we are stardust. Yeah, we are stardust with a beautiful light. Oh, I, oh, I, oh, I, they can't be confined. Oh, I. I don't want to. I don't want to bore you guys with all of it, but you can go check out the uh, the whole rest of the song and the music video on YouTube if you want to. That is awesome, and we will have that uh, link available. I'm going to email it out to everyone on here along with the recording of today's uh, special learning event. So great job with that amazing voice and awesome. incredibly talented. Um, one of the kids here in the United States wanted to know uh, how early did you start with piano lessons? 
Cool. Yeah. I, from my recollection, I was seven. So it was second grade. Um, and I took piano lessons. I took piano lessons all the way through high school. So I took them, you know, basically second through 12th grade. And there was a moment as there often is in 10th grade, more or less, where I really wanted to quit. I was like over it. Like I was over needing to go to lessons after school. Um, and also my piano teacher wanted me to go to a more um, like high level academy type situation for piano. And I didn't want to do it. So I actually really kind of like gave up the opportunity to become a much more adept, um, like classical or technical trained pianist. But I think for me, piano, like, and playing piano is really a tool to get out the songs. So even though I'm not, um, you know, like the craziest jazz or classical or whatever pianist, um, I, I really feel like that piano training, the amount that I had was a good amount for me to be able to, um, write and express at least the chords of any song that I want to write. That's really good advice. Um, we have a, this might be a, if this is too deep of a philosophical question from, from, this is one of our friends, Bring Mev. It on. <laughs> Mev is in, she's in, uh, I think Northern Italy. Uh, Mev, you should be able to unmute to ask your question. <laughs> Yes, thank you. Hi, nice to meet you. Hi, Mav. Uh, my question is, uh, I basically would like to know what would you like your last song to be about? What would I like my last song to be about? Yeah. That's a good question. Um, I think, hmm, I mean, I, yeah, I guess I, I don't really think about ever not writing songs and like obviously at some point uh you know that is getting deep but like you know at some point we all won't be here and like I won't be able to write songs but I think if I had to choose a theme or like a topic for my last song to be about um it would be it would be um choosing love and choosing truth, you know, I think for me, and actually like a lot of my songs are kind of about that in a certain way. Um, and about making a transformation, you know, like making the transformation from a place where you're stuck or you're, you know, like feeling bad or annoyed or disconnected to like transitioning to a place where you feel connected and where you feel, um, like you can breathe and like, you can be yourself. And like, I think that, transformation um is something that you know we're all on that journey for ourselves every day and like nobody's gonna do it except for us like we have to be responsible for making that transition for ourselves and for choosing it so i think like that would probably be my my pick of a topic would be like hey choose love because you're the only one who has the power to do that for yourself Sure, that's really good. I, that was profound. It's like you prepared for that question. So um, we have a- uh, this, this is what I, this is my life is like, you know, thinking about these things and then putting them into music. So it's, it's, it's impressive. bring it on. <laughs> um, Vega, Vega in Spain ha had a pretty good question. Uh, we'll go with a few more questions. Go ahead, Vega. Um, hi, it's good to meet you. I, hi, nice to meet you. I would like to ask you, if you have any advice for teenagers who want to become artists. Yeah, um, I probably have tons of advice. So I'm going to try to, I'm trying to select a, a good nugget, a tasty nugget for you right now. Um, I think, you know, I think this is something that you, you probably hear a lot. And I think it can get really annoying to hear it because it sounds very superficial, but everybody who gives this advice is like, what you have to understand is like, they have so much experience in this advice that they're trying to like wrap up into just a little, like a little takeaway. So the overarching thing is to um, really listen to your heart and trust yourself. I think that's advice, not just for artists, but for all of us. But I have found for myself as an artist and in particular in working with other artists that it's really easy for us to chase trends, to think that we have to make songs or music or art or cooking or our career or our lives in a certain way, because that's what the culture says, or that's what our parents say, 
or that's what our favorite teacher in the whole world says. And like, they must be right because you just love them so much. And, um, I've really found that, um, it's a journey to kind of balance out taking in that advice and taking in that info about, you know, what you should do from other sources and then kind of weeding through that and, and coming to the place where you're doing what you want to do because it feels really right in your heart. And that might look and sound nothing like what you thought it would be. So that would be, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a heavy piece of advice, but I think that's kind of my, my overarching um, tip of the day is to like always be checking in with yourself. Like when you're making something or you're creating art or you're developing your career in any field, not just in the arts, um, is this what you really want? Cause like my belief is that um, your quality of life is richer and the rewards are so much higher if you're courageous enough to follow your truth um, and not just do what you think you should do to fit in. So it's more or less kind of like, it's okay to put yourself out there. Yeah. I mean, to put yourself out there as you are, you know, and not to, I mean, just some practical examples. I mean, I've, over the course of my career, I've tried many things, you know, I've tried on different genres, different production mm -hmm. styles, different kinds of outfits, you know, like I've, I've tried a lot of things kind of like, and when I look back on it, what I see is that I was, I was searching for like, who am, who am I really? Um, and you know, that changes too. Some, some sure. days you're feeling like very goth and some days you're feeling like very neon and like, that's okay. Like you're allowed to change your mind and like be both of those things on different days. Um, but even that, like, I don't think I, I didn't own that before. I felt like it had to be one thing. And now mm -hmm. I'm like, no, like I'm me on whatever day. And you know, I honor the other people who are just doing them on whatever day. And like, I really get that that could change day to day. Yeah. Um, we have a, a, we'll go with a few more questions and we'll let you go. Um, one oh, of our course, kids, one of our kids from uh, Germany, this is Chantal. Um, Chantal, you kind of, Along the lines has to do with what I had just asked, but yours is a little more in depth. Uh, you should be able to unmute to ask. Um, hi, nice to meet you. Hi. I was wondering because earlier you mentioned that your mom always used to tell that story when you were two years old and singing. Um, was your family always supportive with your music career because it's something not a lot of people always do or like it's really out there? Yeah, it's such a good question. So. The short answer is yes. I was really lucky and am really lucky that I have a family that always validated my choice to um, make music, to be in theater. Um, again, I think, you know, I had a little bit of a, a specific situation because when I became a professional so young, my parents had to really support um, like driving me to the theater. I mean, I was 12, 13, like I couldn't drive myself to the shows that I was doing. So my family really had to participate logistically in making it happen for me to be able to perform in theater and in movies and in TV shows. And, um, and they did, um, I would say my mom in particular was always like, she was going to be supportive as long as I loved doing it. But if she saw me kind of not loving it uh, or getting stressed out by it, she was always like willing to pull the plug or like let me pull the plug. So I think, um, you know, like you said, there are some some families who see the performing arts as a very sketchy career, you know, or like not a viable option. It definitely is. Um, it is not always um, a linear path. So it's different than like, for instance, my youngest sister is a surgeon and her path, her career path was like this, then this, then this, then this. And like, you just do the things in the order and then you end up a surgeon. Um, and that's, you know, it's worked out well for her. That was what she, she picked. Um, for me, I never picked that. Like I've always been sort of comfortable in the discomfort of uncertainty of like, what's my next thing? And like, who am I going to work with next? How am I going to make my next money? Um, and I will say that there's some, there's definitely some stress and some pressure to that. So it's not for everybody, but it's, it's, I've been really lucky because not a single person in my family has ever said things like, 
when are you going to get a real job? You know, like never, nobody has ever said that. So thank God. We thank them because you're a great performer yeah. <laughs> and you, you have a lot of great music. Be sure to check her out on Spotify. Nice. Um, so we have a couple, a couple more student questions. Uh, this is from Ludmilla and she is one of our friends over in Europe. Ludmilla, you should be able to unmute and you can ask your question. She might be having difficulty. Like to know, there you go. I would like to know how you learned to sing, please. Sure. Um, for me, learning to sing was kind of like, a, like it was more like learning to use the natural voice that I had. Cause like, again, I just sang from the beginning. As soon as I could make noise, you couldn't shut me up. So I think it was more for me, a matter of, uh, honing that talent. So it was like, oh, wow, there's like a natural tendency here. Um, but how do I make sure that I'm developing healthfully and safely? How do I make sure I'm taking care of my voice uh, and my body so that I can have longevity in this career? Um, and the answer to how I did that is lots of lessons. So I've studied with you know, dozens of teachers over the year uh, as a, just as a singer. Um, some more specialized than others. Um, so like I have one teacher that I worked with for a lot of years who was a combination songwriting coach and vocal performance teacher. So with her, we worked on like the technique of training my voice to be healthy and strong, but also, uh, to like the interpretation of performance. So, you know, I would play her a song like Stardust, that song you guys heard, and she would really give me advice and feedback on how to make the performance more powerful and, and like have my performance connect with people. So like not just the way, it's like, here's an example, you know, like I could sing the song, the chorus of the song, I could be like singing it like really wispy and quiet, like, we are stardust, yeah, we are stardust. Or I could sing it kind of like more out. We are stardust, yeah, we are stardust. So and like what she helped me to do was to find both of those colors and to like find physically what I needed to do to be able to access those choices. So it's like, I'm not stuck in one way or the other. It's kind of like I get to, I gained more freedom in choosing how I wanted to perform a song. So that's really what, um, you know, my vocal training has given me. That's cool. And uh, for those who don't know, can you kind of list some of the people that you've collaborated with uh, professionally in the past? Yeah, definitely. So um, let's see. Um, performance wise, I've done shows with groups like the Goo Goo Dolls and um, 10,000 Maniacs. Um, I once did a show with Lady Gaga um, really early, like before she was like a giant megastar in New York. We were on the same uh, like performance showcase. So that was definitely cool. And, uh, and Lana Del Rey, I think might have also been on that show. Um, and let's see, like as far as writing and recording, um, I have one song that uh, that the incredible Billy Joel sent me some ideas, some lyrics, and I, I finished that song. So that was a collaboration. Um, and um, lately I've been doing a little bit of collabing with yoga DJs. So like I did a remix of Stardust with this guy, DJ Taz Rashid, which is kind of like a chill house remix, very... Um, you know, kind of rhythmic for like movement and flow if you do yoga or, or practice movement styles. So yeah, I mean, I, I love to collaborate and um, both on stage and in the studio. That's uh, all, all that is just fascinating stuff. And like you said, it's just you kind of putting yourself out there. Um, so we'll go with two more student questions and we'll, we'll let you go. This is from Marta and Marta is over in Spain and Marta, you can unmute to ask your question. She's unmuted. We might have had te technical difficulties. She wanted to know what <clears throat> wanted to know um, when you were younger. Did you find it difficult? Uh, did you ever get discouraged 
uh, when it came to trying to figure out your creative process? Yeah, absolutely. I still do. Like that never goes away. That's definitely like, it, you know, it goes in waves. It's not like I always live in a space of discouragement or I always live in a space of like, you know, I'm the bomb, but there's, there's always a space um, where it, go, it goes in cycles. Uh, when I was younger, let me, I'm trying to think of some examples. Yeah. I mean, there's so many instances I can think of where somebody told me that, you know, my voice was too bold, you know, like too screamy, you know, and like, that was something that I really had to deal with for like many years, just figuring out how to like, what did, what did they really mean? And like, for me over the years, I realized that again, like there were some things in the way that I was delivering my vocals that for some people felt a little, um, just like a, just brash, like offensive to their ear. Um, not everybody, cause some people like that sound, but like for some people it just landed on them, like, uh, annoying. And so like, I re that was very discouraging when it happened. Now I'm, you know, older with way more experience. And if someone feels like that, I feel like, Hey, I respect that. You know, your my sound isn't for you. Like, it's just not what you dig and that's fine. Um, but I also kind of understand what they mean, you know, like how I can shape the sound if I do care to like shift that. Um, but yeah, but I also, I also had a guy, um, when I moved to New York, I was having meetings with publishing companies and publishing companies uh, represent songwriters to try and get their songs sung by other artists. So like, um, I mean, a lot of big artists today write their own songs, but I'm trying to think like, uh, like Cardi B might have like a, a hook, you know, a chorus that's, that another songwriter wrote for her. And so like I was in this publishing meeting trying to get this guy to represent my songs so that he could, you know, get other artists to sing my songs or like get my songs into TV shows. And he sat and he listened and his feedback was that I wrote too many words. And I was like, what, you know, I mean, you know, like, have you ever heard a rap song? It's like words, 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 words. Like, so it was so, it was so frustrating. Cause I was like, I mean, the song that he was referring to was not Stardust. It was like a long ago song, but it kind of went like this and it had a lot of words in a row when it kind of went and it flowed and it went and it went on and on. And it was like, I didn't think, you know, I had heard songs that had a lot of words before. Um, but yeah, it was, it was like, it was frustrating because, you know, I'm there like thinking, hey, I'm bringing you the hits. And this guy was like, I can't deal with you, you know, cause you just write too many words. <laughs> so that's like two things I could send. I could probably tell you like hundreds more, but just so you know, when you are doing what you love, it doesn't mean it's always going to be easy. And it doesn't mean people are going to agree with what you do all the time, even though way more people have supported me than not, but it's easy to get hung up on like the, the one person who discourages you. Sure. And, uh, you know, I'm sure this is very helpful for those of you students out there who are interested in becoming musicians to where Cassandra is kind of letting you know where those landmines are before you step on them. Um, we have Jose and Jose is over in Portugal and Jose, you should be able to unmute. You had an awesome question. Yes. Uh, I would like to ask, how do you deal with pressure uh, that your fans put on you and like, when you when you're recording the the music you're just thinking uh, should they should i put something to to them to like more i i think what yeah. he's trying do you have pressure it. as far as relate releasing it as well um you know at a certain time i think i get it jose so yeah what i'm understanding is do I feel the pressure of satisfying my fans and like thinking about like how to do that and I mean the answer is yes but to me the best way I can satisfy my fans is to fully give myself over to this music and express it the most truthfully as possible 
And I can tell you that over the years, I mean, I have fans even now who they let me know, like they'll tell me, hey, I love this thing you did. Or like, actually, you know, like I didn't really love that last thing that you did. And the great thing I think about my relationship with my fans is that they feel that they can be that honest with me. And I feel that I'm not going to show up and give them something that isn't honest from me. So yeah, I mean, I do, I feel the pressure, but I don't feel it like, uh, like a difficulty. It just feels like I have an opportunity to elevate people, to make people feel something that they want or need to feel through music. And I, I want, I take that seriously, you know? So like from that perspective, I guess there is some pressure, but um, I'm not yet at the level, like I'm not signed to a label or anything. So like, I also don't have um, people around me at the moment who are trying to pressure me into sounding like a certain thing or, you know, write a certain kind of song. Uh, and I know that that's a pressure that many artists do deal with, but I'm not in that place right now. Um, is it okay if we ask one more student question? Of course. Okay, this is Roxanne, and she is in England. Roxanne, uh, you can unmute to ask. Hi. My question Hi. is, how do you manage to convey feelings in your song? Wow, you guys have such cool questions today. Um, well, there are, there are a lot of tools I use to convey meaning and feeling. Um, and I think, you know, some of them are kind of like the obvious embedded in a song, tried and true, you know, a melody. Um, when I choose the melody and I choose how the notes are going to move around, um, that conveys a certain feeling. Uh, also, of course, the lyrics. Like in all of my songs, I'm making a certain lyrical choice um, and it conveys, it conveys something like um, my upcoming single is called Burn It Down and it's so different than Stardust. You know, Stardust is all about feeling, uh, you know, connected and uplifted and, you know, how we're so much more powerful than we know. It's very, very like kind of positive lifted vibe. Burn It Down, on the other hand, is much darker. Um, it's in a minor key. So Stardust, for those who have a little music background, and even if you don't, those chords, they're kind of like more happy-ish. And Burn It Down sounds more like... So it's like more, more of the chords are kind of dark and sad. And that's like the song is a lot more of like a brooding song about transforming your life again with the transformation with me, but like, uh, yeah. So it's, it's more like, um, Hey, like I'm, I'm going to burn it down. You know, I'm going to burn down my old life and start again. So both the lyrical choice, the melody, the underpinning uh, chords that I choose, those all influence how the feeling of the song is. Um, so, well, first of all, thank you for performing for us and thank you so much for joining oh, us. Yeah. Guys, I put uh, the edutainment link for any of our upcoming guest speakers in the chat as well as CassandraKubinski.com. Definitely check her out and add her on your socials. And if you have any direct questions, her contact information is on her website. Cassandra, before we let you go, is there any advice you can give to these kids as they kind of go off into the world and figure out what they want to do, whether it's work into music or work into something completely different? What advice would you give for them? Yeah. I, okay. It's a great, great place to end. Um, and again, yeah, just thank you guys so much for having me and for, for your time being here and being curious about uh, these different career paths that edutainment brings you. And um, so some advice going forward for anybody, one of the biggest, biggest things that I've learned is no matter what you want to do, find somebody who has already done it and learn from them. Um, it's basically mentorship. 
which I know is, you know, kind of a big giant theme these days. Um, and it can be very daunting or kind of scary to ask somebody who's like gone where you want to go to help you, uh, to advise you. Um, but even so number one, do ask, do ask, like do find someone who has gotten where you want to get and learn from them. It is truly the fastest path to get where they got. Uh, instead of like reinventing the wheel and thinking that you have to be like so clever and smart and figure it all out yourself. Trust me, you'll do plenty of figuring it out yourself anyway, even if like all you did was try to follow in their footsteps. Um, but um, yeah, so I mean, along with that, I, I feel that another piece of advice that's key that's essential to doing that is you really have to be curious about um, connecting, like connecting with people. Uh, and I think right now it's easy to become such a lone ranger and be like, I don't need anybody else. All I need is this computer. Like I can learn everything I need online. I don't need to open myself up and be vulnerable and ask any questions. Um, and that's like a really good way to not get to the top of what you want to do. Um, the people who who succeed in every industry. And I'm talking like, I have friends who are uh, restaurant owners. I have friends who are um, pharmaceutical scientists. Like I have friends in a variety of industries and they all agree that, that, that building a network, reaching out to connect with other people, not just to get, but also to give, you know, to like be willing to share what you know, um, is so key to succeeding. Um, and it also it makes the journey way more fun to like share it with other people. So yeah, connect, reach out and connect with people. That would be my advice. That is great advice. And before we let go, before I end the meeting for all, I'm going to allow everyone to unmute. And can we all say thank you to Cassandra for taking time out of her day to talk to you guys? Thank you. Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.